Every morning, as we get our daughters ready for school, we encourage them to dream big. I want to be a doctor with a walk stuff. When I grow up, I want to be a veterinarian. We tell our girls they can be anything they want to be. And for a while, they believe it. But as adults, we don't give ourselves the same freedom to dream. When do we lose it? A few months ago, my daughter Evie asked me if being a lawmaker is an all-boy job. Even at six years old, my little girl was starting to see certain things as impossible for her. That was the day I decided to run. If my daughter wants to be a world-famous singer, I will be her biggest supporter. And if she wants to be a state representative one day, she needs to know that's available to her too. My path hasn't been typical. I've been a lawyer, a stay-at-home mom, a teacher, and now I'm running for office. I know firsthand that it's never too late to build the life you dream of for yourself. Every Arkansan should have that same chance. We deserve a state government that opens the doors of opportunity to all of us. We all tell our little girls that they can be anything they dream. Let's build an Arkansas where we can keep that promise. Hi, I'm Brooke Wallace filling in for Max Brantley with your Arkansas Times news headline updates for Monday, May the 7th. A new Talk Business Hendricks College poll is out that shows State Representative Clark Tucker with a big lead in the Democratic primary race for the second congressional district seat. Tucker is around 30 points ahead of his rivals, but nearly a third of those polled remain undecided. Tucker was favored by 41% of the likely Democratic primary voters polled, trailing him teacher and activist Gwen Combs with 11%, teacher and activist Paul Spencer with 10%, and Clinton School of Public Service project manager Jonathan Dunkley with 6%. That left 32% who did not know. Arkansas is one of the 13 states that tests recipients of benefits under the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families Program, or welfare. A law passed in 2017 made Arkansas's TANF drug testing program permanent. It was previously a two-year pilot. The website Think Progress recently tallied the results. About 19,000 people applied for TANF in Arkansas in 2017. Of those, 3,430 were given a survey intended to screen for drug use, and of those, only five were given drug tests and only two of those admitted recent drug users tested positive. Another eight refused to take the test. With staffing costs, the program cost the state $32,500. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge rejected a proposed ballot initiative on Friday from David Couch to raise the minimum wage to $12 and allow governments to set higher minimum wages. Voters previously raised the state's minimum wage via a ballot initiative in 2014, bumping it from $6.25 to $8.50. The $12 proposal is one of two possible proposals for the minimum wage drafted by Couch, the Little Rock attorney who has worked on a number of successful ballot initiatives. Couch has also submitted a separate proposed ballot initiative to raise the minimum wage to $11, which does not include the provision to allow local governments to go further. Rutledge rejected that proposal a little more than a week ago. A protracted back and forth to win approval from the Attorney General for ballot measures has been typical. The rejection of the $11 wage proposal, however, was more outrageous than usual. The language in the proposed ballot initiative was identical to the language in the previous minimum wage initiative, which was not only approved by the previous Attorney General, but ratified overwhelmingly by voters. Well, that's all your news headlines for today. You can read more on the Arkansas blog. Thanks and see you tomorrow.